I'm a huge Ruby fan, I won't lie about that. I joined the show during the premiere of Volume 5 and have stuck by the series since, and while many people have conflicting opinions on the path that the show is traveling in, I really like the show and I love to talk about it. With Volume 9 on the horizon for us, I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at one of the volumes that changed the show and the lost media that hangs around it. So, with that being said, why don't you go ahead and sit back, relax, grab a snack, drink some water, because that's really super good for you, and get cozy, because today, we're talking about the lost deleted scenes from Ruby Volume 3. Okay, so before we jump into this, we'll do the normal video format, starting with talking about the series of Ruby itself, giving backstory and, you know, whatnot. So, Ruby, spelled R-W-B-Y, is a series produced by Rooster Teeth and created by Monty Oom. The show is heavily influenced by anime, as seen in character designs and fight scenes throughout the series. The series premiered in 2013, with the first volume having 16 episodes. It started in July and concluded in November of the same year, and got a DVD and Blu-ray release. A year later, Volume 2 premiered with 12 episodes running from July to October the same year, and it also saw a Blu-ray and DVD release. A lot of Ruby fans say that after this, Volume 3 became the changing point of the series. Volume 3's storylines consisted of the long-awaited Vital Festival, the attack on Beacon Academy, and the reveal of Maidens. This is where the story started to take off from the average lives of students studying at a Huntsman Academy to the story of young adults fighting in a world against magic, and relics, and evil. We no longer follow our team of heroes just trying to live day to day, as we now follow them as they seek the truth and try to save the world. Our main characters are Ruby Rose, Weiss Schnee, Blake Belladonna, and Yang Xiaolong, which, if you haven't guessed already, each initial of their name forms Team Ruby, led by Ruby Rose. Each character is based on a fairy tale character or someone from some form of fictional media. Ruby Rose is based on Little Red Riding Hood, Weiss Schnee on Snow White, Blake Belladonna being both Belle and the Beast from Beauty and the Beast, and Yang Xiaolong being Goldilocks. There is a supporting cast of characters, like Team Juniper, who consist of John Arik, Nora Valkyrie, Pierre Nikos, and Lai Ren. There are more characters that contribute to the movement of the series, some playing larger roles than others, for instance, Professor Osborn, who is attributed to the events of the main series. So, we know our characters and where they come from. So, what's the story? So, this is actually a huge one and contains spoilers from the series, so fair warning! Our main heroes are in a world filled with monsters, or Grimm as they're known, and are training to be the protectors of humanity. However, there's an evil witch in this world named Salem, who wants to divide and destroy mankind. Professor Ozpin, or Ozma as he was once known, is an immortal soul who has been tasked by the gods to unite humanity using four relics, creation, destruction, choice, and knowledge, and bring peace to the world. Our heroes must protect the relics and the powers of the four maidens, who are the only ones who can reach the relics, and ensure that they never fall into the hands of Salem. So. Yeah, that's the gist of it. It's a huge story, and it's a dark twist from various fairy tales. Heck, Rooster Teeth even released a book of fairy tales from inside the universe of Ruby, which I own, by the way, and it's amazing. During the production of Volume 3, however, something significant happened to the crew. Monty Oom passed away. This heavily impacted the series and its production, and what ended up happening to the volume. Volume 3 was seen as a tournament season, with all kinds of crazy fights and whatnot. The volume started with Ruby Rose talking to her mother's grave, and throughout the volume we progressed through the tournament. Halfway through, however, Professor Osborn reveals to Pyrrha Nikos that she needs to become the Fall Maiden to protect the Beacon Relic. When an attack on Beacon is launched by the enemies, we lose a bunch of characters, and the story progresses to leaving Beacon to find the enemies responsible, leading us to Salem. Yeah, Volume 3 was wild, and there's a bunch I left out there. I'll be honest, I think Volume 3 may be my favorite volume of the series, with Volume 2 being a hard second. After Volume 3's release, Shane Newville had posted a letter about his experiences with Monty Oom and Rooster Teeth in general. Through this letter, Shane talks about key scenes from the third season that had been changed or completely removed from the final version. So, what was cut from Volume 3? While I discuss these deleted scenes, I'm going to be speculating how these scenes could have changed the volume or the story, as some of these have a bit more impact than others. I should also mention that I'm getting the list of cut scenes from the Lost Media Wiki article about them, so if you know any deleted scenes that aren't mentioned in this video, I'm really sorry. I do know that this first deleted scene, however, isn't mentioned in the article. During Volume 3, in the Vital Festival Tournament, there is something called the Doubles Round. During this round, each team selects two fighters to have a two-on-two -two battle. It was originally planned that Team Juniper would face off against Team Sun during the Doubles Round, 
with Pure Nikos and Nora Valkyrie representing Juniper, and Sun Wukong and Neptune Versalis, I really hope I'm saying that right, <laughs> representing Team Sun. The battle was originally intended to be in a scrapped setting in the arena, the setting being based around Gravity Dust. The fight was cut, however, when it was decided to not show the doubles round for Team Juniper, however, it is shown that Pura moves on to the singles round when she fights Penny Polandina. I honestly don't know if this scene was ever finalized into any form of animation, or if it was even storyboarded for that matter. I know it was planned, and I do know that the Gravity Arena was recycled in Volume 7 during Ironwood's fight with Dr. Watts. So another Juniper fight that was actually cut is going to change this volume as far as the story goes. In the letter, Shane talks about a planned fight between Team Juniper and Raven Bronwyn. In the letter, it states that Raven would attack Juniper while they were at a cafe, and it was meant to, quote, foreshadow things to come. However, the scene was cut. Had Raven actually stayed a part of Volume 3, she would have been a very important component. It was said on one of the commentary pieces that she was planned to interact more with Yang, but that was cut on time constraints. However, we can say that with Crow becoming a main character, it is likely that she would have been a bit of a parallel to this character, as she abandoned Ozpin's team, and Crow, who by the way is her brother if you don't know, is actively there to help Ozpin. I think keeping Raven in would have made more sense, because she was teased at the end of Volume 2. But hey, still cool, and we do get Raven to spill the beans on most of her lore in Volume 5, Chapter 6, known by its song. Something really interesting that was cut was an extended fight between Blake and Yang versus Adam Taurus. However, this fight was actually recycled in Volume 6. This was actually animated before it was recycled as well, with screenshots and test footage existing of the fight. The only differences between them are the models that are used in a slightly longer fight in Volume 6. Honestly, I don't think it would have changed much to have kept this in Volume 3. Obviously, it was the beginning of the Adam Taurus storyline, so I don't think it would have affected too much. We would have gotten an idea of his skills, but yet again, we were already aware of what he was capable of from the Black trailer. In the letter, it was said that they didn't even write it in the script because they didn't look at what was already animated, whatever that means. I'm honestly surprised that they were able to recycle this animation because the show is now animated in Maya, but it wasn't before. I looked at the video that compares the two animations, or what's leaked of the animations, and yeah, you can see the similarities. I just think it's really neat that if it had been in Volume 3, it would have been a good way to demonstrate what Adam Taurus was really capable of. The next scene on this list is a different version of the fight between Roman Torchwick and Neo versus Ruby Rose. Not a lot is said about this one other than it not taking place on an airship. I don't think the location of this fight would have changed much other than Neopolitan's getaway. I'm pretty sure that they had decided to kill off Torchwick by this point as he really wasn't the show's main villain. They needed room for Salem and her faction along with Cinder taking the spotlight from Roman. I don't think this would have changed much other than different fighting animation, Neo getting away, and maybe whatever kind of grim Roman gets killed by because honestly I don't see a reason for a Nevermore to be anywhere else but the air, but hey, Volume 1 proved me wrong with the Emerald Forest, so yeah. The final alternate scene is an absolute game changer. At the end of Volume 3, we witness Pyrrha dying from the perspective of Ruby Rose, who at this time unlocks the power of her silver eyes, an important plot point throughout the series, one that was distinctly mentioned in the beginning of the series. The original draft was supposed to see John witness Pyrrha's death, and not only that, but be the cause of it. Cruel, actually. We would have seen Cinder win, but honestly, I don't know how we would have seen John get out of there. Plus, with Ruby not being there to unlock the silver eyes, I, I don't know. This was Monty's original vision, as the letter says that he talked about it a lot. A lot of Pura and Cinder's fight had stayed the same, just the end result of it being a little different from the original. Say they kept this one in, I don't know how we would have ended Volume 3 character-wise. Like, the story would have been the same, just the way it affects our characters. I don't see Ruby unlocking her silver eyes without Cinder being present. I also wonder how Jean would have been affected as well. Obviously devastated, but... How would his character progress? He's seen as this parallel to Salem in a way, as he loses his loved one, but he has to keep going. Instead of making his goal to bring them back, he makes it his goal to keep moving forward with Pyrrha being his inspiration. But, you know, hey, that's that's just my theory. So, these scenes, outside of the Sun and Juniper fight, are all mentioned in the letter by Shane Newville. It should be said, and very strongly I might add, that these are all from the perspective of Shane and the animation that he was assigned to work on. There could be, and are very likely, other scenes that aren't mentioned here. I want to put a little disclaimer that this video is here to discuss Shane's scenes because those are the ones that I could find a source to validate from, which is why it's the Lost Media Wiki page, because there's references. Obviously there are other cut scenes, but I thought these were pretty interesting, so let's move on. Okay, let's analyze where these scenes are today. Obviously, Rooster Teeth has them, that's no debate, although it could exist with any of the animators who worked on Volume 3. 
Shane worded his letter pretty interesting. He discusses that some of the animations had already been worked on, i.e. the Adam fight, the Torchwick fight, you know, that kind of stuff. However, with things like the Volume 3 concept ending and the Raven-Juniper fight, it's worded like it was never animated, instead just cut. A Tumblr page leaked screenshots of the Adam fight back in 2018, and in 2019, clips were uploaded to YouTube as comparison with the actual fight. Honestly, I have no idea where this user got the screenshots or the footage, but a few of the screenshots show that the video file is called Ruby Adam vs. Yang Unused Footage, which means that this person might have gotten this from an animator or someone. This is interesting because the existence of this footage online raises the chances of the other animations somehow existing. I'd imagine that there's an archive, or at least a folder of unused and cut animation, or incomplete animation. That's usually the case for most of the lost media I've covered. With Rooster Teeth being an online entertainment company, I do see these existing somewhere on a file or a flash drive, along with some of the other things that Monty helped animate. So, as for the release of these animations, if they were even completely animated, I don't see them getting released. It took a leak for the Atom fight to be put on Tumblr, so personally I have no idea how these would get released. Maybe as some sort of DVD or Blu-ray exclusive for the end of the series, I don't know. I could see it released as some sort of anniversary thing, but honestly if they wanted to release this stuff, it should have just been an extra on the Volume 3 home release. So, th there are my thoughts on that. You can skip over this part if you want, it's really not important to the video, but for fun, I decided to write an alternate timeline where all these deleted scenes are present. In this alternate timeline, a lot of things stay the same, that being the Maidens, the Vital Festival, but what does change is the presence of Raven Bronwyn, as mentioned in the cut scene. In a timeline where she had stayed in the volume, she would have most likely met with Yang behind closed doors, and a perfect moment for that would have been when Yang was alone after being disqualified from the tournament. Instead of Crow coming to comfort her, we could get some Raven interaction. It would have been really interesting, her telling Yang that it's good to break free of all this fun and joy while the real threat lingers in the background. We would have gotten more from the Roman battle, although he still would have died and Neo gets away. Had Ruby never faced Cinder, this would have been an ideal moment for the Silver Eyes to be unlocked when Grimm are storming non-stop. As for the Cinder and Pyrrha battle, Jean directly influencing Pyrrha's death would have totally screwed up his mentality. I would assume in an alternate timeline where this happens, Volume 4 would be spent dealing with his grief as well as the Ren and Nora storyline. In a reality where Cinder doesn't get flashed by the Silver Eyes, Ruby isn't a direct threat to Salem's faction. As far as they know, Ruby only unlocked her Silver Eyes when she used it on Cinder. Without her being present, nobody would know, and Salem wouldn't send Tyrion after Ruby. That makes this journey to Mistral in Volume 4 so much easier, and Crow doesn't get poisoned. Tyrion would just simply go after the Spring Maiden, and I doubt we get a lot of villain storyline for Volume 4. So there's my take on these deleted scenes if they were left in. Obviously it's just speculation and my basic fanfiction. You know, maybe I should write fanfiction. Regardless, I think these scenes are interesting because of how they could have affected the series and how different things could have looked. And we're at the conclusion of this video. Wow, do I have a lot of stuff to go over. First off, yes, I am recording this while I have a cold, so I sound not so well. I also want to point out that a lot of this came from that letter, and there's a high chance of deleted scenes that I missed. I would very much go as far as to say that there's a guaranteed chance. I just really like these, so I thought I'd be able to talk about them. If you have any that are interesting or something that I miss, there should be a pinned comment that you can reply to about that topic. Obviously, this content is educational, it's awesome, and I really enjoyed talking about this topic. Ruby is cool for me to speculate for. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like and dropping a comment. If you're interested in more of my content, consider subscribing, it's free, and you can click that bell icon to be notified of my next upload. Check the description for my socials so you can be up to date on my video progress, or if you just care about what I tweet, which is very, very unlikely. As always, guys, it's been a blast, and I will see you all next time. Peace!